Hello guys, we move on to question number three on 2021 CXE Mathematics Pass Paper. And here we go. The diagram shows the triangle PQR in which angle QPR is equal to 62 degrees. And as you can see, that is inserted in the triangle below. Angle PQR equal to 90 degrees, and that is why we have a little box here, which indicates that this is a right angle triangle. And PR is equal to 11 centimeters, and that is the hypotenuse there. All right, good. Now, what is the question asking us? Part A says calculate the size of angle PRQ. Now, what angle am I referring to here? This is P, this is R, and this is Q. So we're referring to this angle right here at R. Now, with any triangle, doesn't matter what kind of triangle it is, we know that the sum of the angles inside of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So for me to get the size of angle PRQ, I just simply need to take the sum of the other angles and subtract it from 180. So I could probably set it up like this. That PRQ is equal to 180 minus the sum of the other two angles, one of which is 90 degrees and the other being 62 degrees. So I'm going to have 180 degrees here. And of course, well, minus... 90 plus 62 is 152 degrees, and that's going to give me 28 degrees. All right, so that is the size of angle PRQ. All right, let's go down some more into what it says. The length of side RQ. Good. All right, so I want the length of this side, which is RQ. Now, when dealing with a right angle triangle, there are several ways to find the length of a next side. You have Pythagoras theorem. But with Pythagoras theorem, you have to have the other two sides, which we don't have. We have to have two sides to find a missing side. If we don't have that scenario, we have to use a trig ratio. Let me remind you. So, ka, to, all right, which means sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tan is opposite over adjacent. Now, what am I going to do? I can use, since I found here to be 28 degrees, I could use that. But if I had made a mistake in part one, then this would be wrong. That is going to follow up. So why not use the angle that we have already? All right. So the angle up here is 62 degrees. The hypotenuse is 11 centimeters. And let's go back down again to see what they want from us. They want RQ. Now RQ is this side down here. This is RQ. And based on where my angle is, 62 that angle would be opposite to this side. So let me call this the opposite side. So I have the opposite side that I want to find. I know what the hypotenuse is, which I'm going to have to use. So clearly, I'm going to have to use sine. So it's sine 62 degrees is equal to the opposite, which I don't know, which I can call RQ over the hypotenuse. So let me just go down and set this up for you. All right. So we're going to have that sine 62 degrees is equal to the opposite, which I don't know. I'm going to call it RQ over 11. What do I do? I need to find RQ by itself so I can get rid of the 11. Now, because I am dividing by 11, to get rid of 11, I would have to multiply both sides by 11. All right, so it can cancel out over there because I need to have RQ by itself. Good. So I'm going to have 11 sine 62 is equal to RQ. Now, here's a good time to bring in the calculator. I just put all that inside of your calculator. 11 sine 62, make sure you close your bracket, and that's equal to 9.71. All right, good. So RQ is equal to 9.71, and don't forget the units, which would have been centimeters, based on what we had on the triangle above. Let's go back up and look at it, right? So it's in centimeters. So I put my answers in centimeters. All right, let's move down to question B. It says the diagram shows three triangles, X, Y, and Z, on a square grid. All right, and as you can see right here. Now, going down, it says triangle X is mapped on the triangle Y by reflection. State the equation of the mirror line. Now, in a reflection, all right, so let me go down to X and Y. In a reflection, there's what you call a mirror line. Now, that mirror line can be found exactly between the object and the image. Now, this is the object. This is the image. The mirror line is exactly halfway in between them. And if you were to fold the diagram and the mirror line, the two triangles would overlap. Now, 
clearly we can see that it is this line that would be the mirror line as it is halfway between them and if i fold it on that line they would overlap now this line is actually the x-axis but what is the equation of the x-axis everywhere on the x-axis the y value is zero so the equation of that line is actually y equals zero all right we call it x-axis it says state the equation of the mirror line so we have to write the equation which says y is equal to zero that's done let's go back up and before we go back up it says describe fully the transformation which maps triangle x onto z all right let's go up here's triangle x and here's triangle z no it's not an enlargement it's not a reflection because we're not seeing that mirror line that would be exactly in between them causing them to overlap now we can clearly see that the triangle turned and therefore it comes down to the fact that it must be a rotation now describing the rotation we need several things we need the center of rotation now if we were to find the center of rotation because it moves from one axis to the next axis and we can clearly see that both of these points clearly surround the zero zero or the origin all right if you were to turn it about the origin of course there are several simple ways you could do it you could put your compass point at the origin and you could actually make a circle going right around put it at this point here and you'll see if it actually goes around in a complete circle to the next point which is minus two if that happens then clearly the center of origin will have to be zero zero all right because the points move on that rotational circle now of course it's that the line moves from being horizontal to being vertical on the side so clearly we have established that zero zero is the origin and of course it moves from horizontal to vertical which means it's just a 90 degree angle and of course this is the opposite direction of the direction that the clock normally goes so it goes anti-clockwise we have everything to describe the rotation we have the center we have the direction and we have the angle which means that i can now go back down and simply write my statement all right so you know write the statement lovely so triangle y or should i say z uh, let me put it properly right so triangle z is a 90 degree anti-clockwise rotation r-o-t-a-t-i put in that t-a-t-i-o-n is a 90 degree anti-clockwise rotation about the origin All right, O-R-I-G-I-N. So it's a 90 degree anti-clockwise rotation about the origin. Let me just write this properly. R-O-T-A-T-I-O-N. That's how we get Z. And that's your full two marks. We have the center of rotation. We have the angle of rotation. And we have the degree. Well, the degree is the angle. We have, we have the center and the direction. All right, now part three. On the diagram, translate triangle Y using the vector negative seven one now negative seven one negative seven is a horizontal movement and because it's negative you go to the left one is a vertical movement and because it's positive you go up so i'm going to go negative seven to the left and one up for triangle y so let's go back up let's go back up all right let's start with this first point right here at zero negative two so i'm going to go seven to the left and one up so i'm going to have one two three four five six seven and i'm gonna go one up so it's gonna follow right here all right very good let me make the point bold so everyone can see it we're gonna do the same thing with all the points so this point as well one two three four five six seven and one up all right so we'll put a point right there all right the same thing here one two three four five six seven and one up so the point goes there now the only thing you need to do now is to connect these points right now of course you're going to be using a ruler of course to get the line straight all right but i'm just gonna i'm using free hand here so i'm just gonna quickly join the points but of course ensure that you use your ruler to connect them all right there we go All right, so yours should be straight lines, really. And that is all we call 
a translation. All right, so we have seen reflection, we have seen the rotation here, and now we have seen the translation. All right, good. Now, on the diagram on page 10, so we're still on page 10, which is where we have the graph, enlarge triangle X using center 0, 0, and scale factor. All right, so it says label the image V, sorry. So I need to go back up here, and I need to put a V inside of this image. Now, please remember that, of course, you use your ruler to get the line straight, all right? So I label that V. All right, let's go down a bit now and get to the next part. It says on the diagram on page 10 in large triangle x about the center which is zero zero and scale factor half label this image w now here's the beauty of this thing all right we're going back up to triangle x the beauty of this is that when the origin or when the center of enlargement is the origin the only thing you have to do is to multiply each coordinate by a half so it makes it much, much more easier. So for example, find the first coordinate. And of course, if you have something, the size should be half as well. So the first coordinate is 0, 2. No, half of 0 is 0. That doesn't change. But half of 2 is 1. So it comes right here at 0, 1. Probably I should have used a different color. Let me use green. It comes right here at 0, 1. All right, good. Let's find the next point here. Next point that we use in the vertices because it makes it easier. Four, four. Whoa. Now half of four, four would be two, two. So it comes right here at two, two. See me that there? Very good. Then out here, this other vertex is six, two. Now half of six, two would be three, one. So I'm going to find three, which is going to be midway here, and one, which is up here. All right, good. Now, let me use a different color to connect these points now. So, there we go. And I'm going to label this W. So, and please bear in mind that you use your, your what? Your ruler to draw this thing as best as possible. All right? So, you have straight lines there. And there you have it. We have completed almost, we have almost captured all the transformation in a single question right there. We have reflection, we have rotation, we have translation. We practically almost have everything. All right, so if you focus, the thing becomes easier. And especially when it comes on to the center, being rotation and enlargement, it's much easier. All right, so you take your time and you'd have completed that there. And from that question, you'd have got nine marks. So you just have to focus and work as quickly as possible.